Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Compelling Conversations podcast. Today, I'm joined by my friend Hassan. Hassan, thanks so much for being here. It's nice being here. I wanted to begin by discussing, has there ever been a moment in your life where you felt like you wanted to give up, but you decided to pick yourself up and keep going? Um, yeah, that, that happens a lot. But well, uh, not really. Like I don't really see giving up as an option. Um, like ever since like I was young and like growing up, I've held I've like I had a lot of like conflicts and problems growing up, like different kinds. It could be school, it could be family. But the way I've been like kind of experienced life and stuff, I haven't failure and giving up, all that stuff is not an option for me. Like I only see how I can fix it if there's a problem like how, how can I fix it what other ways can I approach this what am I doing wrong who should I go ask for help that kind of stuff and I never really that's not really an option to to be totally honest why has that never been an option for you to give up because I don't know like I've um I've like ever since like I kind of went through things I realized that if you ever want something, if you ever go for something, if you have a goal, giving up is not going to get you there in any way. You're not. And the second thing is, is that you're not going to grow. My goal is to like grow. I want to improve myself um, in any way, shape or form. And I think failure is like, OK, like you you make mistakes, you learn from them and then you move on. You don't give up. Uh, and that's just that's just going to like put me down in and not let me uh, reach my goal. Mm. You mentioned about getting help. Has there ever been moments in your life where you felt reluctant to get help? And if that was the case, why do you think that that was? Uh, reluctant to get help. Uh, normally, I try to avoid asking for help. Uh, that's just like a challenge. I see everything as a challenge. Or if it's like a homework or anything like that, I'm just like, I want to see if I can do it just to, just to know that if I can do it or not. And the second thing is I don't want to make that in habit. And because asking for help ultimately means that you're relying on someone else to, you know, provide yeah. assistance. So I do want to be independent and like try my best. And if I, I keep hitting that, keep hitting a wall and just like, I just can't make it through then asking for help would be like my last, my last, um, my last lifeline. <laughs> yeah. And that's interesting. Like that keep hitting the wall. How do you gauge that line? How do you know when you keep hitting a wall? Cause I don't know if you've experienced this, but there's moments that I, I can kind of reflect on it. Like, wow, like I kept hitting a wall, but I didn't, I wasn't convincing myself of that. I was convincing myself of the opposite. Like, no, you just got to keep going. Were you like aware that you're just keep hitting a wall or you're just like you were un unaware and you just kept like not able to pull through? I suppose in a way it's kind of like denying the truth, you know, where it's like you keep hitting a wall, but you don't believe it. You know, and so you kind of convince yourself of a lie, maybe. Hmm. <laughs> That's interesting. The way I define that, like I hit a wall, right? I keep hitting a wall is if, <coughs> excuse me, if like I'm, <coughs> if I have like different, if I have another way of doing things, right? Let's say I'm doing a homework and I, or, or yeah, or an assignment or whatever. And I go and I'm like, I'm not able to figure it out. Then I'm like, you know, I'm going to hit, I'm going to go, go to Google or something, whatever. And every time, like I have these ideas, right? That's another chance that I keep going. And ultimately, when I the when I hit a wall, basically, is when I don't have those ideas. It's when I don't know what to do. It's, it's when I've tried out all the ideas that I have. And that's the last step is like, I need help. <laughs> do you ever feel embarrassed when you make it to that, like, last threshold? Uh, only when the solution is super simple. <laughs> that's when I feel embarrassed. <laughs> what does that mean when the solution is super simple? 
Uh, because like sometimes you know you're you're in this like mindset, right? Uh, and you kind of overthink it, think the situation, think overthink the problem, and you ask for help, and someone from a different perspective is coming in, and they don't they don't know like they don't have all this frustration or whatever it is these emotions built up after you know hitting a wall or failing so many times, and they're they're able to think clearly. And when they give you an answer and the answer is so simple, you're and you're like, why didn't I think of that? That's when yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's like, <laughs> but what about you? Have you ever like asked for help or been reluctant to do it? Yeah. Something I was reflecting on recently where I think I am reluctant to ask for help if I need it. And it's, it's almost as if I feel like people might think lesser of me. Or it's like an embarrassing thing, like, oh, you have to ask for help. And kind of like what you said, where it's like, it might, to others, it might not seem like a very challenging affair. But for you, it is. And so it's like, oh, man, like, will I be perceived as a wimp or something like that? (laughs) So, yeah, like something like that. It's, It's been something that I've been reflecting on. And I wanted to ask you, you mentioned frustration. Where do you think that frustration comes from? How does it build up? Mm, it, it builds up when things aren't going your way. So, and that's natural. Um, and it kind of it, like, it depends on like how fast it builds up is different for everyone. Um, but when, whenever you keep trying and then, you know, this, <coughs> sorry. Um, but when you keep trying and then that the frustration kind of, kind of comes over time and it just kind of like builds up. And I guess that's where it comes from for me. Mm. But do you ever get like frustrated whenever you're, you know, doing like something you can't get over, like where you have to ask for help? Yeah, something like that. Like what I've been thinking about recently is for myself, I often notice there's phases where it's like there's a birth and then a death and then a rebirth. And then it kind of just repeats, you know, like that roller coaster of life up, down, up, down. And I think the frustration happens to me when that death happens at an inconvenient time. It's like, oh, man, like I'm at that bottom level and this doesn't feel like the right time for it to happen. But then you have to think about it also, like, I guess, from a realistic lens where it's like death doesn't knock on your door when you want it to, like in real life. So that, you know, that metaphorical death of the phases of your life it can come at any point too and so i think it's in those moments where the frustration is like oh man why is this happening but you have to just kind of hold on and remember you're exactly where you're supposed to be do i have you ever felt hopeless in those moments like you have no you can't ask for help or there's nothing you can do about it it, it can certainly get dark like that But I think um, that's the beauty of faith, you know, where you, if you believe you really do have that, it it comes out of you innately. Like, okay, this is really dark and I don't understand it and I don't see it, right? You don't see, you only see the pixel, you don't see the mosaic and you still rely on God in a way. Like, oh, well, at some point it'll make sense. I might be able to see this for what it is at a time that I don't know will come. Something like that. What about yourself? Um, I, I would, I'm going to give you a similar answer, but um, <laughs> Alhamdulillah, like Islam has been like my, like my go-to, you know, every time I have an issue, every time I feel hopeless or frustrated or anything, you know, I just go and pray. And I think uh, throughout like life, um, I just noticed that just waiting, just waiting is, it's so, sometimes it's so hard to do, you know, just sit there and wait, be patient, have supper. And that literally gives you your answer sometimes, you know, you're like, what's going on right now? You know, you don't know what, you don't understand. You don't, you don't understand. Like you people ask like, why me? Why is this happening to me? Or whatever it is, whatever problem is going on. You just, all you have to do is wait. And once like, because waiting and having supper, it's going to show you, gradually like the time time is going to show you what's going on it's going to show you also going to show you like what Allah's plan is like what God is planning for you 
and you're gonna see like okay so that's why this didn't happen or this is that's why this happened or whatever it is you know and that that, yeah. that mindset it's kind of it pulls me through whenever i have no hope i'm just like i just gotta sit here i need to just keep trying and just be, uh, be, be patient yeah i i genuinely love that you said that you know it's brilliant really and you mentioned that thing about like prayer and i noticed this yesterday when i i went to the i went to go pray with the rest of the the brothers in uh at the basement and that that morning the whole morning i was i was frustrated you know it wasn't really my it was it was tough you know but then i showed up and i i met all these folks and there's kind of that spirit of camaraderie and then we all prayed together you know and then like it, it's interesting when you pray together with people you do feel different you know i mean there it, it has its own charms as opposed to when you pray alone and so when we were done with that i was like wow like a sort of um peace you could put it kind of came over me like good spirits like oh it'll be all right type of a thing i don't know if you've ever experienced that dynamic and if you have what is that like for you uh, as in like praying together and just kind of understanding that we're all in it together like that in that kind yeah, of yeah that that's the way to put it you know like even if you show up to a mosque or something and then you like pray together and you're done it's like what is that experience like for you it's immaculate i'll say that it's it's a feeling where all the stresses go out out the window um it feels like i just want to be in that moment you know normally whenever you're not in a mosque whenever you're not uh, in that setting right it's you always have these like thoughts on the back of your head or these tasks that you have to do or these stresses for me whenever like everyone gets together and prays together and you know just kind of everyone you know that everyone has those problems everyone has those frustrations but when you get together they somehow for me pers uh, personally they just go away and I'm in the moment and I just pray and you know and I don't know it's it's a different it's a different feeling I'd yeah say. and it, it rejuvenates you it's as if you're like like i heard jordan peterson one time discussing about prayer how in a way it's like sacrificing the tyrant within you and i i really resonate with those words because it's like when you don't pray right or when you don't want to pray it's like the bitter side of you wins but if you do pray it's like the better side of you wins you know it's literally like sacrificing the worst side of you and it's for the sake of God. And it's a, it's a sublime feeling. It's immaculate, like you said. So I think wow. it's a really cool thing. You know, it's that is because, you know, sacrificing the tyrant side, because I've, that's a really good thing to say. Cause, you know, you're always like back in like a long time ago, I used to think, am I wasting my time praying or all that kind of stuff? So that's what it reminded me of. Like you kind of just like let go and just, the submit basically yeah is that an easy thing for you like letting go and submitting um sometimes <laughs> depends on what's going on if you're like with fan friends or family or if you're doing something time sensitive then it gets in the way but i think it has to do with priorities at the end of the day and i'm you know i'm trying you know i'm trying to you know set it right so where I have no objections and just go straight up, drop what I'm doing and go, right? Yeah. And I think everyone's going through that. Yeah. What do you think are some ways that could like make it easier for a person to be able to do that, to let go and submit? Um, faith. Um, I think after like, so first, um, you know, I turned it into a habit and just like just letting go and, uh, and just going to pray whatever I'm doing, just drop it. And like over time, I think it turns into faith. Like if I'm imagining like if I'm doing something like I really like, you know, I'm enjoying it. I'm, just, I'm playing like, I don't know, video games or sports, whatever. I tell myself, I'm going to, I'm going to drop this for Allah. I tell Allah this, I'm going to drop this for you. And that makes me feel so good that I'm doing this for him. And like, hopefully that'll make him happy. And then when I actually go pray, I feel good about myself. I don't really feel like I'm missing out anymore because, you know, I've achieved something greater, right? Yeah. Where did you, how did you develop that, that way of thinking or that habit of 
I'm dropping this for you. Just being grateful. Um, you know, ever since like I was young, you know, I've I've give I've been giving so many, given so many blessings. And I just I took the time to like stop and appreciate it and just keep maintaining that and reminding myself of how grateful or how, you know, like a blessed I am, right? So that kind of being grateful develops is uh it's like I like God gave me so much and I want to give back and this is the least I can do. So I'm gonna sacrifice this time, sacrifice this whatever, this happiness, entertainment, and I'm gonna just go pray. Yeah. Yeah, gratitude is something I think about as well. Because I I think that that is also something that that humbles a person. And I think I, I imagine it makes it easier to let go and submit, it's just being grateful. Why do you think people of course, like the light isn't on you to give a blanket statement, but I'm just curious, like, why do you think people are ungrateful? Um, that's a hard question. I won't lie. Yeah, um, something to think about. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, the only thing that comes to mind is that they're distracted and, you know, they're distracted by their stresses and their worries and what they need to do. And like as humans, you always want something, right? Let's say you want a really nice car. Once you get that car, you're gonna be happy for like well, I don't know, like a car, uh, like a like a month, right? And or a year or two years. After that, you're gonna want a you're gonna want a better better car. That's just the nature yeah. of humans. You always want more. So I think people get distracted by that feeling of like stressing and stressing about where you need to go, and kind of they can't let go of what's really important. Right. So I think that's probably it, just distractions. Yeah. Do you ever get distracted? Well, actually. How do you know to cut off distractions? When I when I fail to perform a salah on the right time, let's say I miss a prayer. And I think that's like a, a big indicator of it. Huge. Praying. Huh. Praying for me. Um, because like that's when you're like, wow, I missed it. And and if I turn, if I let that slide, right, then that's gonna turn into a habit. And I'm gonna miss two prayers and I'm gonna miss three, and then I'm not gonna pray at all, right? So yeah. I think I cut it off right there and then, and I'm kind of like always keeping myself in check. Like, I'm not gonna let this go. I need to, you know, next time I'm not gonna miss it. Yeah, I like how you said that, because it's like distractions are like a swarm of snakes, you know, and it's like you said cutting it off. It's like if you cut off the snake's head when it's little, it won't turn into like a, a beast to kill you, you know, yeah. and it's that that's how it is with habits, right? It's like cut them when they're small. That's right. Yeah. I actually yeah, wanted to, yeah. sorry, <laughs> I just wanted to ask that question about you. Like, why do you think people aren't grateful? That was a good question, so I had to ask it back. Yeah, yeah, no, it's thank you for asking. Um, I don't know, to be honest with you, but I think something that just came to the top of my head is being bored can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. And when it gets bad, it gets really bad because people can literally start wars just because they're bored and so i think like ingratitude and boredom perhaps have some relationship maybe i mean i don't really know but that's just something that came to my mind like perhaps they're bored and that just it, it makes things angrier and angrier you know the frustration like everything just kind of comes together you know all the bad feathers kind of I don't know, connect, something like that. But I really don't know either, to be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's fighting that battle. <laughs> Everyone is, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Going back to this this whole conversation and distractions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, man, like they're everywhere, aren't they? Like, especially in today's day and age. I was reading, one of my friends had sent me like um, 
uh, a passage from one of C.S. Lewis's books. And he was talking about how, like, in the old days, there was no way to, like, like, discard God from your life. Like, in a society for, like, all these centuries, God was a part of your life. It was very difficult, if not impossible, to get him out of your life. But in, like, today's day and age, and even from when C.S. Lewis was alive, he talks about how, like, it's so easy. You know, you can be drawn to all kinds of distractions and the, you know, images of like money or status or whatever else. And so I'm curious, do you feel like in your life you have an antidote to like being free from those distractions? Um, I think I do. And I think everyone has it. Um, And I think it's in your control, too. Um, But you just have to kind of have put yourself in that position. So me uh, getting away from distractions means putting me in a place where I'm not distracted. So where can I go that I won't be surrounded by things that are, are not going to help me achieve my goal? Like if I have friends that are bad influences, then that's not, that's my fault that I'm with them. Right. Then I need to take myself somewhere else. So in that sense, um, I think everyone has this, um, has control over it, you know, um, like, let's say you can, like, make friends who are uh, more towards have uh, similar goals as you or anything like that, you know? Yeah. You said everyone has that, like, antidote. And it's it's different per person. But that's so cool. I like that you mentioned that. Where it's like it's not something exquisite. Like, everyone can do it. Everyone does have that power if they really try, if they really yeah. want to access it. I think that was cool of you to mention. Yeah. What something that I, that? yeah, something that I was, um, over this winter break, one of the things that I slowly, slowly developed was taking a walk in the park, you know? And it's interesting what that process is like because the minute you start walking, it's like your thoughts just keep going and going and going. And it's so interesting because you're literally, you're literally like with your thoughts. There is no phone there to distract you. You know, there's, I, I keep a pen and paper on me, but beyond that, it's like, it's literally you and your thoughts. And that's the conversation that's going on, you know? And um, I, I think it, it helps you get into better touch with yourself or something like that. I so, agree. yeah. I think, um... Just something as simple as taking a walk is super underrated. It gives you time yeah. to just be with yourself, hang out with yourself, right? Appreciate yourself. Yeah. But do you yeah. think that would uh, in sometimes maybe lead to overthinking that may be negative? Yeah, I think it can. And this is what I think is interesting about having conversations like these. It's like, you know, we're discovering different things as we speak, you and me. And so it's like, I'm sharing my thoughts, you're sharing yours. And like in that, in that little dance of a kind, it's like, we're exploring new territory. And so I think in, in a way it, it kind of sheds away the negativity, you know, it's like, Oh, like I'm being heard. I'm listening to you. It's like a cool thing. You know, that's what I would say about that. Right. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. There another thing that I wanted to mention about distractions was social media. You know, I feel like uh it was Muzamel, I think, the other day, who's like, it's more of a distraction than it is a tool. And when he said that that night, I, I really felt that in me. And I, I think it was like that day where I was just like, I think I really need to walk away. You know, and it's been a number of days since. And honestly, man, like the sort of levity I feel within me, it's a beautiful thing. Have you ever taken that sort of break? Have you ever walked away? And what has that done for you? Mm, from social media, like specifically? Specifically, yeah. I ha- I don't think I have, to be honest. But I feel like I ha- I've never allowed myself to go too deep into it. Um, I've only used it for specific things like memes or just, you know, sharing like Islamic 
you know, videos and whatnot. And, you know, through the years, I would agree with Muzammil that it is more of a distraction than not. But I think, once again, it's also, it's in your hands. Like, you can walk away, away anytime. And whenever, for me, it starts to become a distraction, I would just put it down, you know? And, you know, I try to focus more on what I want to do instead of what it's showing me or what kinds of ways it's distracting me. So that's the way I approach it. I also wanted to compliment you, by the way, that I think, like, all the interactions we've had, honestly, like, they're amazing. And what I really like about you is you're a great listener. Like, you really are. Where does that come from you? Um, It just comes from, like, I don't know. Like, I just thought about it. Like, whenever I'm speaking, someone else is listening, right? So the more I speak, the less they speak. So I want to like, that's when, when someone else speaks, right? And another uh, thing just popped in my head is whenever someone else speaks or whenever you speak, right? You're not learning anything. But whenever someone else speaks, you're gaining more knowledge. So I think sometimes I tell myself to just be quiet because and like focus on what like a person is saying because sometimes you have your own thoughts that you're like, okay, I want to reply, I want to reply. But you, for, you, stop, you just kind of... Um, you stop listening at that point. So yeah. I think listening uh, equals like gr- uh, more knowledge. And like, all, like, and for me, like, I just want to like, I'm trying to grow, you know, as a person, I'm trying to like mature faster. <laughs> so that's my goal. I like that. That's cool. You, you know, like when you are listening, what happens in your mind? Like, is your mind clear? Like, th- I imagine, like, the better you get at it, the impulse to say something just kind of recedes. Was that like it for you? What's going on in your mind when you're listening? Um, When I I do have, like, something, like, whenever I have something to say, I just, like, kind of, in my mind, put it on cue. And if I forget it, then I forget it, you know? That's the way I'm, like, listening. Because I I prioritize what you're saying. I try, I try to give the person who's speaking my attention instead of myself and i think that's really like i think that i think that's going to be more beneficial for me and also like whenever i speak then i would like expect someone else to do the same you know yeah you said the thing about the cue and if you forget it you forget it is that liberating does that make you feel free like oh yeah just forgot it's okay oh no (laughs) no (laughs) no because I, you, you know, like genuinely, you always want to like, what was that thought? What was that thought in my head? Uh, what was it's that? one of those things that, that you just you lost into the ether, huh? Yeah. So kind of like I learned <laughs> to accept it at that point. Yeah. Are there any people, by the way, that um, you don't really like care much about them, but then it's like they just do one thing, one specific thing. And you're like, all of a sudden you're like, whoa, like I'm interested in who that person is. I'm genuinely interested because like i saw this about them or something um, like kind of a person does something that makes them stand out yeah like this, this is gonna be a little bit of a funny example but like for instance steven tyler like i i never really cared about him ever but like as a writer when i had the the lyrics to dream on in front of me and i was reading the lyrics I was like, oh my God, like, like I recognize something. I'm like, who is the man that wrote this? And then at the top, it says written by Steven Tyler. And all of a sudden, like my view on Steven Tyler changes. Cause like he did this one thing that spoke to me, you know? So has there ever been like something like that in your life? Or like, wow, just that one thing totally changes your view on a person. Ah, uh, I can't really think of one thing. I would say I don't really like expect have expectations from like people who I don't know that closely. So mm-hmm. whenever someone does uh something then that's like out of the blue or something that's um like I really like I'm interested in, then yeah, that that happens a lot, but I can't really think of like a specific thing. Okay, it kind of builds up to it, but I wouldn't really have an answer for that. Mm. Yeah, it was just something interesting that came into my head so I was curious to ask you about it 
Yeah. But I'm curious, Hassan, um, do you have any closing thoughts? Anything that you felt like you wanted to say, but you didn't get a chance to? There's something on your mind that you wanted to express? No, oh, man, I'm just like, I just wanted to appreciate you like inviting me here. Like, I just feel really like, I feel heard. And you're a really good listener as well. So thanks for inviting me. Yeah, thank you. And I, I, I honestly, I'm, I'm very happy that you're here. Like, this is a really cool conversation, you know. Um, there's some people where you're like, man, like, I just can't wait to talk to that guy. And honestly, you're one of them. I'm like, I just can't wait to have him on here. And so <laughs> we did this, and I'm, I'm glad you were here. You shared some amazing things, and they'll benefit who they'll benefit. So thanks for being here, man. Thanks for inviting me, man. Appreciate yeah. that. But I suppose until next time, huh? inshallah. Inshallah. Take care, my friend. You too. <laughs> Thank you.